Hey, welcome back to Grandpa's channel. This is uh, number three out of a series of PC building, or whether you were upgrading or building a new PC. And the first one, we went into the motherboard, how to properly set it up before you install it. And the second one, how to install it, prepare the frame, put it in there, install the power supply and run your cables to get the best airflow, to get everything out of the way, to make it aesthetically looking great. But the next thing, what most people forget to do is to put and install your fans properly. You know, in the in olden days when I, you know, when I was building PCs, we didn't have all these issues of riser boards and all these other boards in those PCs and creating airflow turbulence and all of that. And the other thing is the heat being generated by PCs wasn't as great. The other thing, the reason why I'm doing this video is a buddy of mine brought over a PC he bought in the store and then he installed a, a new graphics card and he put a PCIe riser board and he added a fan and all of a sudden the PC was running very hot and he couldn't understand why. So we're going to go over some of those reasons that that happened and things that helped you in your PC building that you don't make the same mistakes, that you can improve the airflow, improve the noise level on your PC. Let's get into it right now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's get to it. So I have two fans here, two case fans. And case fans have evolved as much as the case themselves. Now we have the RGB case fans we have the fans which just have an led inside to make them light up we have you know larger fans smaller fans we have fans that connect directly to the motherboard right and we have fans that uh will also have a mole up connector right and we have fans you know that have three wires four wires temperature tent sensitive all of that but coming down to it you know, the big difference between the fans, number one, is the amount of air volume that they can produce. And a lot of people believe that the big fan can produce more air volume than this fan and vice versa. And both are true because what basically the difference between a larger fan normally at the same speed will be able to put, will produce more airflow because of its larger air volume. But sometimes the smaller fan, because it has more blades at the same speed, will produce actually more airflow than this one. So when you're looking for your fans, one of the qualities that you want to look for, number one, of course, we've all heard of bear, um, it's got ball bearings in it, it has this, it has that. But look at the, the blades. You see how this has more blades than this one has? So this one is going to run a little louder to produce the same amount of airflow where well, this one is actually going to run quieter. Are you getting the difference? The other thing, of course, is to understand which direction the air is flowing because that's going to become everything about this video. Airflow is the most critical thing. Now, if you look on the side of most fans, as you can see here, Yeah, you can see it. Over here, I left the dust on it because you wouldn't be able to see this otherwise. You see the airflow is going this direction, and the blades are going to be turning in this direction. And that, you know, can make a difference because they do make fans that have, not, not only do they have a direction, but they actually go in the opposite direction. And that can also fool you uh, in, when you're installing them. And, of course, one of the things, of course, is the size. You want to match the fan size to the case size of where you're installing them. Now, getting all that out of the way, let's little talk about a little bit about airflow in itself. Now, if you've been knowing anything about aerodynamics, air, once it goes in one's direction, it wants to keep going the same direction, just like water. That's why if you put a, a hose out and the water is shooting, it keeps going in the same direction. It doesn't want to, it doesn't try to spread itself out in multiple direction. It actually cohesive and tries to stay in the same direction. That's why when they make cars today, 
they study the aerodynamics of the car. So they get the least resistance of where the air is going. Well, this is the same when you're building a PC. As you can see behind me, you can see the arrows of the fans. And when you're setting up your fans, you want the airflow to make a straight direction. If it's And every time you try to make the airflow bend or twist or resist, you're going to have air turbulence. And that turbulence is going to reduce your cooling effect. And that is what we're going to be talking about in great deal. As you can see behind me, there's a PC. It's got two cooling fans in the front, a cooling fan in the back, power supply, and your GPU board. In this particular case, it's using a um, it's using a water cooler to cool the processor. But the bottom line is here is we have to look at which direction is the power is the air going. Remember that every device in this computer causes air turbulence, and air turbulence is your enemy. For instance, if we're looking at the GPU, GPUs today have cooling fans. Now, those cooling fans are cooling and blowing air out of the frame. You also have a power supply. It has a fan, and it is, depending upon the way it's built, in most cases, throwing air into itself and out the back. So that is now creating a wave of air. And in most cases, the PCs are the same. Let's go look at that. As you can see, I have two PCs lined up in, in I have arrows drawn to give you an idea of which the airway is flowing. The one on the left, as you can see, the, the three cooling fans are blowing in from the front. And that is usually where you have your grill, which is restricting airflow, but prevent dust from getting into the PC. As it goes, it's going to flow across the PC, correct? And now you have your, your GPU board, which is intaking air, correct, across the grills and out the back. And usually on the bottom of your PC, you will have your power supply, which is most times intaking air and blowing it out the PC. So it is a good thing to have the fans blowing in that direction because it's going to go past that area. And whatever volume of air is left is going to go out the holes in the back of the frame, correct? Because it doesn't have to make a turn left or right. And then on the top, any vents or cooling is going to now go across your CPU. Now, in this particular case, I have a large CPU cooler, which has a cooling fan. And you want to have that cooling fan face in the direction of the best airflow. You know, I've seen them mount them downwards and sideways and upwards and thinking, no. You want to make it so that the air is going in the direction of flow. If the air is already going to be going naturally in that direction, you want to stop any turbulence from happening. And in this particular case, we have a case fan that's on the back here, which is now drawing air out. Now, it is subjective, okay, of whether or not you're going to have a top cooling fan or not. And that is in this particular case. But if we look here on the bottom here, these are some of the newer cases, and I don't like this particular design. Why? Because those three cooling fans, while aesthetically beautiful, you know, you have your case and you have your glass so you can see them, they look really nice. What is the problem that they are creating? One is the air is coming straight out and it's going to hit the frame of the glass door. And as it hits the glass door, it has to make a turn. And that is creating turbulence. Air is going which way? Every which way. It's going to go in the direction of the least resistance. You following me? And as it makes, it's going to make its turn, it's going to make its turn towards the GPU. It's going to make its turn towards the uh, your power supply, depending on whether it's mounted on the top or on the bottom. In this particular case, we happen to see this one has water cooling. So now we have water cooling going on, and we have three fans on the top blowing air out this way. Well, if that's happening, now you have this air turbulence that's happening. Now, what happens with air turbulence is the air begins to swirl, and as it swirls, it tries to find any way to get out of the case, any hole, anywhere to go. 
And it's also going to cause the air to be drawn in from places that you don't want. And in this particular case, you'll most likely will find yourself a year later with a lot of dust everywhere because it's drawing air in from different cases. Let's continue to talk about what this all means to you. So let's get into what positive and negative pressure. And I'm going to tell you about my friend's PC and the problems he had and why he ran into this problem with overheating uh, and, and improper cooling when he added those components. So let's talk about that. So I'm going to just basically read to you what, PC, what, what positive and negative pressure means. And I'm just going to basically go over what I'm going to write here and then read it to you so you can get it. Positive pressure means that more air is being pushed into the case by intake fans than is being pulled out by exhaust fans, resulting in a higher pressure inside the case. While negative pressure means that the air is being pulled out, out is being pulled out, then is being pushed in, creating a vacuum effect within the case in a lower air pressure inside the compartment. Essentially, it's about moving air in and out and the amount of holes that are going to go out. So one of the things that happened to him, he bought this PC from Costco and, uh, you know, it had front cooling fans, had no rear cooling fan. It didn't have a GPU and he wanted to add a riser board and expansion board. No big deal, right? So he installs it and he installs it so that He's got the rear, the rear cooling fan on the back going out. He has his GPU going out, right? He has um, other fans that he had another fan and it was going in. And what was basically happening is normally your airflow is going in from the front and going out the back. Okay, because that's normally where you have it on the new PCs, a grill there that filters the air that you've got to clean on a periodic basis. Well, in his PC manufacturer, they made the front go out. And then because his back was going out, his GPU was going out, his power supply was going out, he created turbulence inside the PC and airflow was just not moving at all. Basically, he had very little air effective airflow. So what we basically had to do in his particular case, what we did is we took the front cover off and we reversed the two fans so that they're now blowing inside and you've got proper airflow. Now, the way you can test this, you know, there is a couple of different ways. You know, once you've got your airflow going in direction and you've had the straightest flow that you've got going in. One of the things I used like to use and I'm going to show you in a video, I'm going to try to capture it. It's called the candle test. Also known as the punk test. That's what I used to call. And basically what I would do is I would, you know, put the front on the case. Or if you, if the case was in front, the side case is solid, I would actually put saran wrap across the panel. And then I would take a candle and blow it out. And the smoke would come in through the cooling fans. And I could observe how the smoke was moving through the PC. And I was getting the best airflow across my components. The other way you can also do it is, if you, you know, they have incense burners or these uh, punks. I used to call them punks. We, we used to call them punks in my day. And you would light them and it's burning smoke. And then you would move it by your fans and you observe where the airflow is going. So you get the most and most effective airflow. Now, my wife's telling me, if you if you light that candle in the house, I'm going to get I'm going to kill you till I'm not going to do it for you, but you get the idea, of course, of how you can do that. But the um, you can't hear in the back. So effectively, that's basically what you're going to be doing is attempting to do that. Now, after you've done all this and you've got the most effective airflow and you've got your fans moving at the best speeds, you're going to go on to your into your BIOS. And if you're using this setup, you remember what I was showing you few minutes ago on your fans if your case fans have connecting to your motherboard and you've got you know cooling case fan one cooling case fan two cooling can phase three you can go into the bios and a lot of the bioses and adjust how fast they're running because it'll actually tell you you know uh, fan one is running at 4000 rpms two is running at 3000 rpms fan four is running at 6000 rpms you're getting my drift 
you can go in there and using the smoke test like I did or some type of screen, you can actually adjust those fans to, to increase the speed on some of them and decrease the speed on others to get the most flow, even flow of airflow. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you haven't done so again, again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Become a channel member. Become a Patreon. Uh, and, and if you, Or you can just buy me a cup of coffee because that's how Grandpa supports the channel and makes things happen. Uh, we're going to be, on my next video, I'm going to be working on the power supply. In my day, it was, you know, you had basically, here's your PC power supply, 200, 300, 400 amp. That was the day of what we did. But today, there are so many ideations of the power supply, whether it's, you know, modular, non-modular, does it have this, does it have that? We're going to be going over it in detail so that you can get an understanding. So you can buy the best power supply for your particular PC and that you don't run into problems later. Anyway, I'll be back with more videos. Thanks for watching. Please leave it in the comments if it's been helpful for you. What did you use? What, what kind of fans do you use? What was your methodology of testing airflow? Uh, and until next time, Grandpa loves you. And go give your grandpa a hug. Until next time, God bless. Thank you.